Databases are the most powerful feature in Notion. And in this video, you're gonna learn everything you need to know about how to create them, how to work with them, and how to customize them. Welcome back to Thomas Frank Explains and to Notion Fundamentals, the completely free Notion beginners course. In this video, like I said, you're gonna learn everything you need to know about how to create databases inside of Notion. And in doing so, you're gonna unlock a lot more power inside of Notion because databases will allow you to create a lot of fundamentally useful tools inside of your Notion workspace, which could include things like task managers, note-taking systems, contact trackers, sales dashboards. Heck, I've even gone off the deep end and made an Among Us game tracker. You can build a lot of stuff using Notion databases. So inside of this lesson, because Notion Fundamentals is a project-based, action-oriented course, we are gonna be building a very simple task manager. And along the way, throughout my step-by-step -step instructions, you're gonna learn about all of the important facets and features of Notion databases, which I will point out right here in this little table of contents. So you can reference this for later use. You'll also find this in the description down below. And in building this task manager, you'll also be able to incorporate it into the personal dashboard template that we've been building throughout the previous lessons inside of this course. Before we get started, I do have two little items of housekeeping. First and foremost, if you are looking to track your tasks and projects inside of Notion, I do have a much more powerful, much more robust and free template called Ultimate Tasks, which has a lot more features than the task manager we're going to be building here. For example's sake, Ultimate Tasks has recurring tasks, subtasks, projects with progress bars and a lot more cool features. So if you do want to check that out, I'll have a link in the description down below. And speaking of example templates, we will be building a simple task manager inside of this lesson, but to give you more reference material to help you play around and experiment and learn by doing, I've also included two additional templates inside of the resources for this course, a simple contact tracker and a simple book tracker. And you can find both of those templates inside the resources for Notion Fundamentals, which I will have linked in the description down below, but you can also find them over at thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals. So let's finally get this lesson on the road and let's start out by first defining exactly what a database is. In a very broad sense, a database is just a collection of records that exist inside of a computer. And in Notion, each of those records is actually another page. So here I have a very simple movies database inside of Notion and I have uh, quite a few records here. Ocean's Eleven, Big Short, Spirited Away. Each of these is a record inside the database. But you will also notice that there is an open as page button on each of these records. So if I open up, say the one for Hot Fuzz, I'm going to get yet another Notion page where I can embed any kind of content that I want. I can put headers, I can put quotes, I can even put additional databases and I can go as many levels down as I want. And that's part of the beauty and the flexibility of Notion. Now, in addition to these records here, databases also have what are called properties. And properties are essentially ways to store structured information on a per record basis, but a property is actually created at the database level. So we can actually see that here in my movies table. I have a property called name, and this is actually the key property of the database. But I also have some other properties. I have genre, which is is a multi-select property where I can add multiple tags. Here I have adventure and animation on Spirited Away. I have heist for Ocean's Eleven. And I also have a checkbox property that I've called seen recently. Some of these are checked, some of these are not. And crucially, like I said before, these properties exist at the database level. So if I were to create a new record here, and let's just say I call this the SpongeBob movie. If I open up this record, we can see that my genre property is currently empty for this record, but it still does have this property. This property is going to exist on every record inside of the database. Now, going back to the database itself, one thing you might be noticing is that this looks an awful lot like a spreadsheet, but it's important to understand that it actually isn't a spreadsheet at all. It's a database, and there are some significant differences between spreadsheets and databases. So to briefly explain that, I'm gonna go over to an actual spreadsheet in Google Sheets called Bad Guys Knocked Out here, and here I can illustrate the main difference between spreadsheets and databases. Inside of a spreadsheet, I have rows and I have columns, which means that every cell has an actual coordinate, an XY coordinate across the spreadsheet. Here I have cell C2, here I have cell D5. And that means we can actually create formulas that target individual cells and then do math on them. So for an instance right here, I've got 179. This is actually just a formula that's adding together the values in B2 and D5. I've got them highlighted here. So that's a major strength of spreadsheets. And in databases, unfortunately, we can't really do that. Going back over to my movies database, these are not individual cells. Instead, they are just property values on an individual 
individual record, which means we can't target them like we can on a spreadsheet, but we do get some advantages that spreadsheets don't have. Namely, we can actually view this information in lots of different ways. Right now, I'm looking at it in a table form, but what if I wanted to see all of my movies sorted by genre and actually split out amongst those genres? Well, I could actually add a view, and instead of choosing a table view here, I could choose a board view, and I could actually see all of my rows this way instead. So the main strength of a database is that it allows us to be very flexible with how we view our data. We can filter it, we can sort it, we can group it, we can look at it in tons of different forms. We have a lot of power and flexibility. And with that sort of definition and difference defined now, I wanna get into how to actually create databases. So let's start building our very simple task manager. Here I've got a very simple page called Simple Task Manager, it's a blank page. And on this page, I wanna start creating some databases. And there are actually several different ways to do that inside of Notion. So let me quickly show you how to do them all. The easiest way to create a database is actually just to type slash database, and you're gonna be presented with two different choices, inline, which will actually display your database right on the page that you're on currently, or full page, which will create a full page database linked from the page that you're currently on. So I'm gonna start with an inline database, and this is gonna give me a default table view, which I'm going to call my tasks. So this is gonna be our task manager database, or at least our tasks database. And later on, we're gonna add a projects database as well. Now note that this is currently inline, but if I wanted to, I can actually make it a full page simply by going to the block menu here and then turning it into a page. I'm gonna get a link on the simple task manager page and then I can see my database just like that. I could also go back to my simple task manager page and I could click the block menu on this link and I could turn this into an inline database. So you have a lot of flexibility right there. Now, besides just typing slash database, you also have another option with the slash command and that is to actually specify the layout type or the view type that you want initially. So if I type slash table, first I have the option for a simple table, which is not what we want here, but I also have the option for a table view of a database. I could also type slash board, get a board view, slash calendar, etc. And if I choose a view type when I'm typing my slash command initially, it's actually going to give me the option of either creating a new database with this new database button right down here, or creating what's called a linked database, which is essentially a new database block that has a source database that already exists. So here you can see some of the source databases that are already in this uh, Notion workspace, all notes, note inbox. And if I created a linked database, I would just basically be showing the exact same information from that database. But here in this linked database view, I can actually create my own unique filter and sort criteria. We'll cover that later in the lesson. So for now, I'll just show you how to create a brand new database in this manner. And in this case, I'm gonna call it projects because we do in fact need a project database to uh, be a partner to our tasks database here. Finally, when you create a brand new page, so I'll just type slash page right here, you actually have the option to create a database right away. So you can choose any of these and it will create a brand new database or ask you if you wanna create a linked database. And it's gonna be a full width page by default if you do it that way. So now let's talk about database views. One of the most useful features of a database is the fact that you can create multiple views of that database, which allow you to see different information, different filter criteria, sorting criteria, all kinds of useful stuff like that. Now, why would that be useful? Well, let me give you an example. I'm gonna go over to the notes page of my brand new template, Ultimate Brain, which is a complete second brain for Notion. And here we can see multiple different areas for notes. We have a note inbox, we have a favorites area that shows only notes that I've marked as favorites. We have recent notes, we have a daily journal. And the important thing to note is that all of these different views here are actually pulling from the same master database. It's called all notes and fittingly it contains all of my notes. But this view of that database only shows me my recent notes sorted by uh, their edited date. Here, I'm only seeing my favorite notes marked with the favorite checkbox like that. And finally, we have a note inbox where the only notes that are gonna show up are gonna be the ones that don't have an area or a resource or a project assigned to them. It's a great initial dumping ground for notes. So this is what different database views allow us to do. We can have contextual views of the same database so we only see the information that is important to us right now. So with that being said, let me show you how to actually set up multiple views in a database. Going back to our simple task manager, right now we can see that the only view inside of my tasks is uh, one called table. And we have no filters, we have no sorts, we'll get into how to do those in a little bit, but for now I actually wanna add another view 
to this simple task manager. First, I'm going to rename this because table isn't very descriptive. So I'm just gonna call this one all tasks. And then I wanna click add view right here. And I'm gonna add another one called do this week. And then a little bit, I'm gonna add some filtering to this view so I only see tasks that are in fact due this week. And I wanna add one more view to this and that's gonna be a completed view. So this is going to be a view that only shows us tasks that have been completed. And note that we have this tabbed bar across the top of the database here so we can see all of our views. However, if the screen width is too narrow for all the views we have, we're gonna have this uh, one or two or however many more button here and then we can see all of the views in this dropdown menu. Menu. Now, another thing that's useful to note is if you click this three dot menu right here, you get what's called the view options menu. And this is gonna give you access to pretty much all the options for this specific view of the database. So you can change the layout and we'll go over layout in a little bit, but you have all these different choices here. You can show or hide the database title. I often like to hide it for a bit of a cleaner look here. We can wrap the columns so their text actually wraps and the cells get bigger. And we also have a lot more options. We have property options here so I can show or hide properties in this view. I can even change the options for these properties. So here in tags, I could come in here and actually add some tags if I wanted to. We have a filter menu, a sort menu, grouping, uh, load limit. This is actually pretty useful. If you have a lot of information in a database, you can set it to only load, say 10 or 25 pages initially, and then there will be a load more button if you want to see more. And then finally, we have the lock database, copy link to view, duplicate and delete options. So basically, if you want to do something with your view, the option for it is probably going to be in the view option menu. So let's now talk about how to actually add new rows to your databases because there are multiple ways to do it. I'm first going to clear out these initial three blank rows. I don't want those. And my first way of adding a new row to the database is simply going to be clicking this new button right here. So I'm going to click that. It's going to give me a new cursor and I'm simply going to add a task. And that's our first way of adding to this database. We can also hit this new button right here, which is going to open a page and I can add a task that way as well. And finally, we can also add tasks to this database by using what's called the plus syntax. And we can do that from elsewhere inside of our Notion workspace. So for example, let's pretend that you were actually at a meeting and you were taking some meeting notes. And while you're taking these meeting notes, you actually want to add a task to your task manager. Well, you could navigate over to your task manager and do it that way, or you could simply hit the plus button and then type out the name of your task. And finally, choose this new build self-containment page in option, which will actually create this in a location of your choosing. And from there, you can simply type in the name of your database. So in my case, it's gonna be my tasks. I'll add it like that. You're gonna get a link to the new page inside the database. And then if we go back to our simple task manager, you will see it's sitting with the rest of our tasks. So that is three different ways to add new rows to your databases. And along with those new rows, we're probably gonna to wanna to have some properties so we can make this database a bit more useful. We're building a task manager after all. So we're probably gonna to wanna to have things like a do a date, a checkbox for checking things off when they're done, maybe even an assignee property as well. So first I want to actually right click this tags property which comes in by default, and I wanna delete it because I do not want tags on my tasks. Now I can actually go over to this plus button right here, and I can add a property to this database. And I'm going to call this property done, and then I'm gonna change its type. And when I click this little type area, you're gonna see there are actually quite a few property types inside of Notion. We have some basic ones like number, select, which is basically a single tag you're adding to your rows or multi-select, multiple tags. We have dates, we have the person property where you can actually assign things to people or at least tag them on a database row. We can attach files and media like pictures or MP3s. We can add checkboxes, URLs, emails, phones. And there are also some advanced property types, formulas, relations, rollups, and we're gonna get into these later on in the video. For now, this is called done, so I want a checkbox type property for this, and that will allow me to check off tasks as done uh, once I've actually done them. I also want a due date property, so I'm gonna call this due, I'm going to change its type to date, and then I'll be able to actually add due dates to all of my tasks. I can also, if I want, actually change the widths of each property on the table view. And uh, with checkbox properties in particular, I can actually make it very small and then move it over so I have it over on the left side. I'm also gonna make do a little bit smaller. And finally, I'm going to add an assignee property. And this is going to be a simple select type property. And here I'm gonna add a couple of options. Let's add Peter and let's add 
Dr. Connors. We're making a very Spider-Man themed task manager right now. So now I'll be able to actually add assignees to my tasks, due dates, and then I can check them off when they are done. Let's go ahead and actually do those first two for now. Let's add some due dates. So I'll go May 25th for this one. How about 27th for this one? And uh, maybe next week for this self-containment crate task. And then I'll add some assignees. So for Lizard Antidote, I'm gonna give that to Dr. Connors. That is his job. Taking grocery boxes to the feast. It's definitely gonna be a Peter task. And then building self-containment crate, also a Dr. Connors task. Now, I mentioned earlier that databases allow us flexibility to see our data in multiple different ways. And in Notion, that takes the form of what are called layout types. This is a table type layout, but it's only one of six different layout types that we have access to. So I'm gonna create one more view inside this tasks database. I'm gonna call this one assignee view. And I'm actually gonna make this a board type view. I'll go ahead and hide the database title for some cleanliness. And we can see that this view is actually more of a Trello style or Kanban view where I can group tasks based on a specific property. In this case, it is the assignee property, but we can actually change that. And I'll show you how to do that later in the grouping section of this video. But you have a lot of different layout types. If I go to my view options here, I can actually change this to a timeline. So I can do some project management stuff. I could change it to a calendar. I could change it to a very mobile friendly list or even a gallery view where I can create header images or add file attachments and show them very prominently up here. But for now, I want this to be a simple board view. Now, currently we are seeing the information in this database in a different layout due to our different layout type. However, across all these different views, we're still seeing the same information. So these different views are of limited value to us. To make them very valuable, we wanna actually add some sort and filter criteria so we're seeing different information for different contexts. So. For all tasks here, I might just want to sort by their due date. And to do that, I can go either to the view menu here and I can access my sort menu like that, or more easily, I can just click sort right here and I can choose a sort criteria. So I'm gonna choose do, and then I have some options here. I can sort it in either ascending or in descending order. And for a due date sort, I think ascending is much more useful than descending. Now note that I can also have multiple sorts for a database view. So I can also sort by say the assignee or the name. And depending on the order I have here, uh, things are gonna be sorted a bit differently. So right now we are sorting strictly by the due date and there are no uh, same due dates, however, if I were to change these due dates all to say May 25th, then our second level sort would kick in and we'd start sorting by the assignee. Uh, but I don't want that for now, I just want due, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my name sort and then I'm gonna change these due dates back. Now, one thing you're gonna notice when you create either a sort criteria or a filter criteria is that if your database is shared with another person, you'll see this save for everyone button right here along with the reset option as well. Basically what this means is that currently my sort criteria that I've added to this view is only visible by me, which can be very useful if you have shared database views with team members or people that you're working with. If you wanna see the data in a certain way, but you don't wanna change it for anybody else, you can not click this save for everyone button and you're just gonna see this this change for yourself on the current device. But if you want it to be permanent, you do want to click that save for everyone button. And again, you're only going to see that if this database is shared with another person. So that is sorting criteria. And I'm going to go ahead and add some useful sorting criteria to all of my task views. So for due this week, I also want my uh, very handy dandy due in ascending order sort. For my uh, completed view, I actually want due in descending order so I can see the tasks that need to be done very soon first. And then finally, on my assignee view, I'm going to add one more due sort. I want that in ascending order because these are not currently done. And one thing that I do notice on my assignee view here is that I can't actually see the due dates. And that's because that property is hidden by default on this board view. So to fix that, I can go over to my view options menu. I can hit properties and I can just simply add my do property as a visible property. I may also want to add my done property as well so I can check things off as I go along from this view. So now I've added some useful sorting criteria to each of our views, but we're still seeing all of the same rows across each one of these views. And to make things more useful, to actually see only the rows or the tasks that fit the current context, like due this week in the next seven days, or tasks that are completed, we wanna add some filters as well. So to do that, we can click this filter button right here 
in the top row of the database, and we can add a filter based on any one of our properties. Now, there are both simple filters in Notion and advanced filters in Notion, and I'm gonna show you first how to create a simple filter. So, because we're on the completed view right here, I only wanna see tasks that are actually completed. So we're gonna choose the done checkbox for this filter, and then we wanna make sure that done is actually checked. I will save this for everyone, and you will notice that we see nothing in this view now because none of our tasks have been checked off. But if I were to check off this task, then I would actually see it in my completed view as well. And we might also wanna add a useful filter to all tasks where our done checkbox is unchecked, that way we're only seeing tasks that we currently have to do because they are not done. And I also want the exact same filter in my assignee view. So I'm gonna come over and add that as I did in the all tasks area. Done is uh, unchecked and save for everyone. But instead of do this week, I actually want two different filters. So instead of creating a simple filter, I'm going to add an advanced filter, which will have two different rules. First, we do want to have a done checkbox is unchecked filter, so we only see undone tasks, but we also want to add a filter rule for our date property, our due date property. And date-based filters actually have a lot more options. So first and foremost, we can change is to several different options. And because we wanna see tasks that are due in the coming week, we actually wanted to go with is on or before, and then we can either choose a custom date, but more usefully, we'll want to choose one week from now. So this is gonna show us only tasks that are undone, but are also due within the next seven days. I'll save this for everyone. And then if I go over to my completed and I uncheck this task, we can see it in all tasks, which shows us all of our tasks, but over in due this week, we are not gonna see it because it's actually due more than seven days from now. Now, before we move on from filtering, I do have to let you know about one more incredibly powerful feature that comes with filters, and that is forcing functions, which is a made up term that I came up with for something that happens when you add a new row to a view with a filter. So look what happens when I add a new row to this due this week view. You're gonna notice that I have a default due date on this new row. And the reason for that is we are adding a brand new row to a view that has filter criteria set, which means that the new row must fit that filter criteria. So a due date is actually added and you'll notice that it is exactly seven days from now because that's what our filter says, on or before one week in the future. And this applies to any writable property in Notion databases. If I go over to my completed tab here and add a new row, I'm going to have the uh, done checkbox automatically checked. Now, what do I mean by writable properties? Well, let's first go over to a list of Notion's properties. I'm just gonna edit this one real quick just to show you. Writable properties include basically everything here except for files and media, uh, formulas, rollups, and then these created by time and last edited time and by properties here. Basically, if it is a property that you can write to, such as a text property or a number property, you can create a forcing function around it. And this can be very, very useful in a practical sense. To give you a more real world example, I'm gonna go over to a demo of a template that I actually sell, but that I actually use as well, called Creators Companion. This is a project management template that I use for all of my YouTube videos and blog posts across all my channels. And you'll see here in this project manager view, I actually have some filter criteria, three rules to be exact. One where status is not empty, one where status is not completed, and one where idea is unchecked. This is a forcing function where status is not empty. To be added to this database inside of this view, we cannot have an empty status property, which means that if I create a new view, and I'll just do it in the table view because uh, I would get the automatic status here in this view. If I created a new row right here, it automatically gets the planned status. So if I just add a title here, I'll just call this a sample video, and I give it a channel, we'll go with the Thomas Frank YouTube channel, then if I go back over to my board view, I'm going to see sample video directly in the planned area. This is really useful because anywhere in this template that I add an idea or a video I wanna make, it's automatically going to get a status and it's going to be here in planned, which is the first part of the content creation process. So that is what you can do with forcing functions and a heck of a lot more. They're very worth experimenting with. And I actually have an entire video on them that I'll link to in the description down below. But now at this point in this video, it's time to talk about relations, which are one of the most useful properties inside of Notion's databases. So what are relations? Well, to properly explain what those are, I'm gonna have to break out the whiteboard. So give me one second. And there we go. 
So database relations are essentially a way to relate records inside of a database to one another, either in the same database or across different databases. So inside of the same database, we may have something like a parent task and subtask relationship. So we'll have say a parent task, uh, which may be like clean out the garage. And that task might be related to a couple of different subtasks like sweeping the floors and organizing shelves. So each of these records exists in the same database, but this has a relation saying that its subtasks include the sweeping the floors record and the organizing shelves record. And likewise, each of these subtasks has a relation called parent task, which lists the clean out garage task as their parent. So that's a relation inside of a single database, but relations are even more useful across multiple databases. For example, a task database and a projects database. If we have a database full of loose tasks, we may want to relate some of those to bigger projects. So for example, maybe I have a project called uh, suit redesign for Spider-Man. And then in my task database, I have things like testing out the web shooters, designing the spider parachute, and then some unrelated tasks like get bread. What a relation allows us to do, again, is relate these rows to one another, which means that if I have a project relation in my tasks database, I can add my suit redesign project to these tasks. And in the opposite direction, within suit redesign, I'll be able to see that test web shooters and design parachute are related to this project. But the get bread task is not related to it. So this is very, very useful because again, we can use filter and sorting criteria to see contextual data when it's useful to us. So let's actually create a relation between our task and our projects database inside of our little simple task manager here. So I can do this from either database because I will be able to select its pair database and then we're gonna have a new property inside of either one. I'm gonna do it in projects. First, I'm going to go ahead and delete this tags property and I'm going to create a property called tasks. I'm going to select the relation type and the first thing it's gonna ask me is what database I actually want to relate this property to. Now I can, like I mentioned before, actually choose this database itself. And if I do that, I'm simply creating a relation to other rows inside the same database. But in this case, I don't wanna do that. I want to create a relation to a different database, the My Tasks database. So once chosen, I now have the option of showing this property on My Tasks. And you can actually see how this little preview changes down here based on how I change the state of this toggle. So if I don't have it toggled, I will have relation property in the Projects database, but I will not see that in My Tasks. In this case, that would not be very useful because I do want that property inside of My Tasks so I can do some useful filtering and sorting. So I do want to show on my tasks. I'm gonna call it projects, that's totally fine. Actually, I will call it project, since tasks will have an individual project. And finally, I will add my relation property. So now you're gonna notice that I have a tasks relation property here. And if I open it up, I can actually choose tasks to relate a project to. And I also have a project relation property on my task manager. So if I click this, I can choose any one of these blank projects. So let's make this a bit more useful and actually create some projects. And before we do that, I actually wanna create some useful properties on this database as well. At least a status property with a select type. So I can have things like to do, uh, doing and done for my projects. And fun little pro tip here with a select and multi-select property, if you do something like an is not empty filter, it's going to uh, pick the first or top listed option and apply it to those new rows. So I actually want to do to be my default option. So I'm gonna actually order them like so. And from here, I can actually create some projects. So let's create our suit redesign project. And how about another project simply called take pictures of Spider-Man obviously assigned by J. Jonah Jameson, of course. And from here, we can create some tasks in our task manager view that will be related to these projects. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some real quick. And now that I have these tasks, I can actually give them their project relations. So I'm gonna grab the project property, drag it over here, and then I can use the relation picker to choose my related projects. So I'll do suit redesign for this one and this one. And I'm gonna do 
take pictures of Spider-Man for these two. And now that I actually have my relations set, I can actually do some useful grouping inside of this all tasks database view. And that's actually gonna move us into the grouping part of this lesson, because inside of Notion databases, you can group your rows by basically any property type. So here in this table view, if I go to my group option in the view options menu, I can choose my project as a grouping type. And now I can see all of my projects within their groups. I've got no project tasks, I have suit redesign tasks, and I have take pictures of Spider-Man tasks. Very, very useful. If I wanted to say, change my assignee view uh, from being grouped by the assignee to the project, I could do that by going over to group and changing from assignee to project. And just like that, I've got a Kanban view grouped by my projects. Now, I don't actually want to have it grouped by project. I do want to have it grouped by assignee. So I'm going to go ahead and change my group by back to the assignee property. But one unique feature in the board view specifically is this subgroup option. So if I go to here, I can actually choose another property to add as a subgroup. And this creates what are called swim lanes. So now I have essentially grouped columns and grouped rows. So I can see all of my project groups but I can also split them out by my assignee across the columns, which is really, really helpful. Now, going back over to my all tasks view, you will remember that I added these project relations directly to each of these tasks after I had created them here. But what if I wanted to simply open up a projects page and add tasks from there? Well, I can actually do that quite easily through a combination of database templates and linked databases. So we are now going to move on to the database templates part of this lesson. So what is a database template exactly? Well, it's basically a page inside of a database that comes in with some default content. Could be anything really, even additional databases. Because like I mentioned earlier, uh, database rows inside of Notion are themselves database pages. So if I wanna create a template for some default content to come in right when I create a brand new row, I can come to this little blue arrow right here next to the new button, and I've got an option for a new template here. If I had any templates, I would also be able to either spawn an instance or a new row from them or edit them, but I don't, so I'm just going to create a new template like so. I wanna call this the project template, and just to show you how this works, I'm going to simply create a heading in here and call it tasks. That's all I'm gonna do. Maybe I'll give it a nice little green background. And now if I open up an existing row that has no page content, I can create that page from the template. And you will see I have that default content there. Same would happen if I made a brand new project. Let's just call it um, nothing. And if I spawn from the template, I'm also going to get that default content. So that is what a database template is. It's essentially a way to set up a bunch of default content right away and then have it come in in all of your new database rows. Going back to my creator's companion template, you will see a uh, Thomas Frank YouTube template. And if I edit it, you can see a whole lot of default content in here. I've got a task manager, I've got uh, internal pages for topic validation, for research and notes, for scripting. And what that means is whenever I make a new YouTube video, I can have all that default content come in. So for example, here's this video, how to stop feeling so tired when you wake up. I didn't have to set up all of this stuff when I made this video project in Notion. I could spawn from the template and then I could simply customize things as needed, write my script, etc. So database templates are incredibly powerful and I think you're gonna end up using them quite a lot if you get deeper into Notion. But if you'll recall, what we're trying to do right here in our simple task manager is have a view of our project where we can add tasks directly to that project. And to get that, we're gonna to have to utilize a database template, but also what's called a linked database. So now let's talk about what a linked database actually is. And to show you how to create one, I'm first gonna go over to my project template and I'm going to edit it like so. So I'll open this as a page so I have a bit more room to work with. I'm gonna make this a full width page as well. And underneath my tasks header here, I'll create a little line just cause I like that. And then I'm going to type slash table. And like I mentioned earlier, if I uh, create a block immediately from a table view or any of the view types, I'm going to be given the option to either link or create a database. Earlier in this lesson, I created a brand new database, but in this case, I actually want to see another view of my, my tasks database. So I'm gonna choose my tasks here and I can 
either copy a view or I can make a new empty view. I'm gonna go ahead and copy the all tasks view like so, just to give me a starting point to work with. And here you're going to see a linked view of that database. And note that it's pretty much identical to our all tasks view uh, from earlier. I also have a link here where I can get to the source database if I want to. I'll hit control bracket or command bracket on the Mac to get back. And now I can start customizing my linked database to be very useful to me. And it's here we're going to add a very particular type of filter. It's called a self-referential filter. And what that is, is essentially a filter for the template that we are on currently, which contains this linked database. And that probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense when I define it, but it will when I actually create it. So I'm gonna to go to my filter option right here, and I'm going to add a filter. I'm gonna make it an advanced filter just because I like how it looks better. And I'm going to filter for the project relation. And I wanna create a filter that says project contains the project template. Now, the reason this is called self-referential is because when I create a new project and I spawn it from this template, this filter here is actually gonna update itself. It is going to reference the page it is on, not just the template. And I'll show you how that works in just a second. So I'm gonna go ahead and save this for everyone. Let's check over our filters as well to make sure there's nothing else we need to change here. We have where project contains our template. We have done is unchecked. I think that's gonna be all good. We may want to remove our grouping since we're only gonna be seeing uh, tasks that are related to this specific project. So I'll go group by none here. And our sorting is by due date. That's totally good. So now if I go back to my simple task manager and I come over to say my uh, take pictures of Spider-Man project, I can spawn this from the project template, which is gonna bring in my linked database. And if we check the filters, we will notice that our project relation filter has updated to take pictures of Spider-Man. That's a self-referential filter. And that is how we can gain the ability to add tasks directly from the project page that are going to be hence related to that project. So if I add one more here, let's just say a candid shot it automatically gets the take pictures of Spider-Man relation because it has that filter. Again, that's a forcing function. And if we go back to Simple Task Manager, we will now see a third task inside of our take pictures of Spider-Man grouping here. So from this point, we're gonna move into a couple slightly more advanced parts of Notion databases for the rest of this lesson. We're gonna talk about formulas and we're gonna talk about rollups. These are two slightly more advanced property types and they can do some really, really powerful things inside of your Notion databases. So we're gonna first start with rollups and we're gonna create a rollup type property in our projects database that's going to show us how many unfinished tasks exist inside of each project. So essentially a rollup is a way for us to reach through our relations and see the property data of the rows that are related to this row. So we could see is design new web shooters done or undone? Is test web shoot parachute done or undone? And to do that, we first need to create ourselves a rollup property. So I'm gonna hit that plus button one more time. I'm gonna call this undone tasks and I'm gonna choose the rollup property type. Now, once I choose this, I'm going to first have to select the relation that I want to sort of reach through, and then I wanna choose the property that I'm gonna look at. So we're going to choose our tasks relation. It's the only option we have here. And now we can choose any of the properties inside of tasks. Because I wanna see which tasks are undone or the number, I first want to select the done property. And if I leave it on show original, I simply get a listing of each of the checkboxes inside this relation. So I have two related tasks here, which gives me two undone task checks boxes here. And I have three relations here, so I get three check boxes. And watch what happens if I come up here and actually check some tasks off. So I'll check off one there, I'll check off one there. They're gonna disappear because of our filter criteria. But now we see some useful information. We see that we have one undone and one done here, one done, two undone here but this is not quite what I want. I'm seeing the original information here. What I would rather see is the count of undone tasks. That would be a lot more useful for a simple task manager, right? So I now need to go into the rollup configuration and I need to change my calculate value from show original to unchecked. And now I have a useful number. I can now see there are two unfinished tasks inside of Take Pictures of Spider-Man. There's one unfinished task inside of Suit uh, Redesign. I'll go ahead and delete nothing because there's nothing inside of that. And that, my friends, 
is a rollup instead of Notion. I can also use the calculate tab down here at the bottom of this table view to uh, show the sum. So now I have three unfinished tasks total. I could do the average, the median, all kinds of useful stuff. But most importantly to me, I wanna be able to see how many undone tasks are within these different projects. However, I don't really just wanna see a number here. It would be a lot nicer if it actually said one task left or two tasks unfinished, something like that. And to get that kind of a result, we're gonna to have to use a formula. Now, formulas are easily the most complex and powerful property type inside of Notion. In fact, I have an entire video planned teaching formulas at multiple levels of complexity, and there are also full courses out there for teaching Notion formulas. So we really can't get too much into them in this video, but I do wanna show you at least one simple formula to get the result that we're looking for here. So I'm gonna create myself another property here. I'm gonna call it meta, and I'm gonna choose the formula property type. And in doing so, I will now be able to click it and get this little code box where I can basically write code to get the result that I want. So as a refresher for what we're trying to do here, we want this simple numeric value in this roll up here to be a bit more pretty, to say one task left or two tasks left. And to do that, we actually wanna pull this property into our formula. And we can do that by simply referencing it with a command called prop. So if I do prop, and I add undone tasks. I'm gonna have this control plus enter to accept message down here. If there is a syntax error, it's going to tell me there's a syntax error like so. And if I hit done, I'm simply going to see this number. So I need to add a little bit more code to make this what I want it to be. Instead of just prop undone tasks, I'm gonna wrap this in a function called format. And this is essentially going to turn the numeric output of our uh, rollup, the one, two, things like that, into what's called a string value. Essentially, it's a text value. And by doing that, I'll be able to combine it with additional text. So I'm gonna do space plus space, and then I'm gonna do a little quotation mark, give myself an actual space, which will be display, uh, displayed, and then I'm gonna type tasks left. And now I have a much nicer little meta property here. I might even hide my undone tasks roll up and just see one tasks left, two tasks left. Now there's one problem here, which is that I'm seeing tasks even if there's a singular task. So we wanna make this a little bit smarter and to do that, I'm going to actually change this to one task and then I'm gonna add on a little if statement. So we're gonna do plus and then we're gonna type if once again, we are going to call our rollup property. So I'm gonna do prop undone tasks, and then I'm gonna do greater than one comma. So basically that is the uh, condition that we're trying. We're seeing if undone tasks output is greater than one. If it is, we're going to do this. We're going to add an S and then hit left. And if not, we are going to simply type left. So now I have one task left or I have two tasks left. And you can get a lot deeper with formulas. And like I said earlier, I've got a whole tutorial video on formulas coming in the near future. So if you wanna go deeper into Notion formulas and learn how you can use them to make your databases and your templates even better, uh, make sure you're subscribed to this channel so you see that in the future. Because let me tell you, you can go very deep into formulas. In fact, the formula that my developer Martin wrote for the recent recurring tasks update in our ultimate task template is frankly ridiculous. I do not understand it, it's super long, but it is mega powerful and does some stuff that Notion frankly can't do on its own. So if you wanna learn how to push Notion to its absolute limits, you're gonna wanna learn formulas. Now, to finish up this lesson, I've got a couple little things to cover that are much less complicated than formulas, but are nonetheless useful to know about. The first of which being database locking. So. Right now, I can do whatever I want to this database. I can change these property settings, I can go into my formula and I can change stuff like that, but maybe I don't wanna have that kind of power. Or maybe I'm sharing this database with other people and I don't want them to accidentally delete properties or change formulas or things like that. Well, one thing you can actually do if you're sharing this database with somebody else is go to the database itself, so I'll go to the actual My Task database and change the permission level of anybody with access to the database from can edit to can edit 
content. And you can see here it says can edit content but can't edit the database's views or structure. So if I give Martin that permission level, he will not be able to say go into that formula we just wrote and change what it says. He will not be able to even hide a property in this view. But another thing you can do if you want is actually lock databases or lock database views. So if I am on this database, I can go to the three dot menu right here and I can lock it, which will make me unable to change any of the properties here. In fact, it will show me right here, this database is locked, so I cannot change any of these properties. I can actually change the content here, I can change due date, I can check this off or uncheck it, but I will not be able to actually delete or change these properties, which is very useful if you don't want things ever being edited or you wanna make sure that even you can't accidentally make a change like that. What you can also do specifically from linked databases is lock individual database views. So I'll show you how to do that right now, but first I will also point out that if you do have a locked database, you can come up here and you can unlock it like so if you do wanna make a quick edit and then you could relock it uh, if you want it locked once again. Now I'm gonna come back to my simple task manager here and I'm gonna open up say our take pictures of Spider-Man project because with it, I have a linked database. And one thing you'll notice on a linked database is if you click the three dot menu right here, you'll see an option to lock views. So if I lock these views, you'll notice that I cannot permanently change things like the filter or sort criteria. I can actually add a filter if I want to, but you'll notice I do not have the save for everyone button. So I'm basically adding a temporary filter for this device, but again, I cannot change the filter criteria for this view at all unless I unlocked that. So you have some flexibility when it comes to locking your database views and the databases themselves. Now to wrap this lesson up, earlier on in the intro, I mentioned that we'll be able to actually incorporate this simple task manager that we've built into the personal dashboard template that we've been building in the earlier lessons in Notion Fundamentals. So that is what we're going to wrap things up by doing. And really this is just gonna be kind of a uh, refresher on linked databases. So I'm gonna come over to my personal dashboard template here. Uh, as a reminder, this is available as a template inside of the Notion Fundamentals class resources, link down below. And here I have a little tasks area. And what I wanna do is actually look at my task manager that I've just created but on my dashboard. So to do that, I'm going to click the plus button underneath this little line here. I'm going to type in actually a list view to get a nice mobile friendly view here. And I'm gonna choose my My Tasks database as the source. And from there, I can do basically whatever I want. I can add unique filter, sort, grouping criteria, and uh, I can basically customize this to my liking. So I do wanna have a filter criteria for my done checkbox where it is unchecked. I'll save that for everyone. And maybe I want to sort by do in ascending order. And that basically gets me an identical view to my all tasks view on the actual simple task manager page. But here it's in this nice compact and more general dashboard. So that is an example and hopefully something that you can use as inspiration to build these more all encompassing dashboards that have things like tasks and notes and web links and basically anything you find useful all in one easy to reach spot. And with that, we are done. We have finally covered databases here in Notion Fundamentals. I know this was a long lesson, but databases are a pretty powerful and uh, complex feature. They take a lot of time to explain. So if you need to review anything, you'll find the table of contents in the description down below. Use that little uh, segmented bar here on YouTube to skip around and go back to whatever you're curious about. And like I mentioned in the intro for this video, there are a lot of companion resources for this lesson. You're gonna find all of them over at thomasjfrank.com slash fundamentals. That is the hub page for this entire course. So there you will also find written and video lessons for every other lesson in this course. And you'll also have the option of signing up for my Notion Tips newsletter. You do not have to sign up for that if you want the resources. There is a bypass, but I do think you're going to want to be on that newsletter because I often share information about new tutorials when they drop, new free templates, all kinds of really cool stuff. So join that if you're curious. And like I mentioned in the intro for this video, this particular lesson has quite a few companion resources, including three sample templates that you can play around with and add to so you can learn how to use databases. There's that book tracker, that simple contact tracker, and the simple task tracker that we just built. One more reminder, if you do want a more advanced task management system, one that I actually use myself, you can get ultimate tasks, which has things like subtasks and recurring tasks and a more uh, robust project management template with progress bars, all kinds of cool features. So check that out at the link in the description down below. And as always, if you have questions about Notion, let me know in the comments down below 
below or follow me over on Twitter at Tom Frankly. Ask me your questions there. That is the social network that I am most active on. So definitely give me a follow if you haven't done so already. And finally, thank you for watching. I know this was a long lesson. Hopefully you found it useful and I'll see you in the next one.